this is a feedback phenomena. So we look at this and we look at the genius. Again, you want to have the technology delivered so you can actually get what you put into the system. And the precision is the most important part of the system, trying to have it each patient, each pass, where it works. And it gives you feedback. So if you're not getting all the energy in, uh, you can have some ways to sort of improve that, which could be improving your technique as far as the way you hold the handpiece, changing the power, lowering the power. These are all things you can do to get the full complement of injury in. So the needle insertion is very important, the high torque motor, sharp needle design, uh, that continual monitoring of actual impedance versus setting. So you're not just putting a setting in, you're actually monitoring the temperature or monitoring the, the impedance the whole time. Protocols have been validated through real studies, uh, not just handing the device off and have somebody use it and see what happens. So those are very important types of things to look at. So if you look at precise control over energy delivered, again, you see that as temperature goes up, you start to see the coagulation change, the collagen changes, the collagen charring over 100 degrees. So you want to see the thermal profile that's confined along between the needles. Uh, again, we're impedance sensing 500 times a second and again, adjusting the energy based on real-time feedback to maintain optimal treatment. These are all features of a precision device. So if you do a, a real uh, procedure, you're going to do over 50,000 plus microcoagulation zones on a face if you do the whole uh, neck and face with the Genius device. And here's the interface here. We'll see this. And you can choose either energy mode or power mode and the depth. All of this is very intuitive. Here's the device being used. It's very easy to hold on to. You just hold it. Again, the device does the work. You just simply want to have a little bit of pressure. 49 needles in and out, in and out. This is an interval mode where it's automatic. You can go up to about 0.4 second off time. Of course, part of that depends on how long your time is per pulse. So it's a very reliable insertion, extraction, insertion, extraction. And Electronics committed to making things better, to developing new protocols. They have an in-house clinic where they're constantly looking at trying to make things better. So again, the critical features we've talked about before, it's really related to the technology. So the technology is better uh, and that makes for a more reliable procedure. And I think that the critical part is again, delivering what you say you're delivering and realizing that what you say that you're doing on the interface is really what you're doing as far as the needle depth and the energy delivered. This is a new phenomena in radio frequency microneedling because uh, most of the devices simply don't do this. They, they just, uh, you put the settings on the graphically used interface and hope for the best. So that's what we call intelligent care. So what are your desired treatment outcomes? So we've talked about the importance of needle depth, the importance of needle sharpness, the importance of impedance control, the importance of the type of uh, power that's used to push the needles in. We've talked about insulated versus not insulated, but let's talk about treatment outcomes because ultimately that's what we want. Now here are some acne scarring pictures. This is Dr. Ibrahimi. Uh, again, acne scars, more acne scars, uh, crepiness of the skin, and probably crepiness is one of the major concerns that our patients have. Again, more before and afters for the neck and the crepey skin concern. And again, as we develop more and more sophisticated protocols for the genius, we'll see even better results than these. So neck crepiness, this is one of the primary concerns of my patients. I think that anybody after age 45, I had a lady about three hours ago, 43, and had a significant amount of loose skin under the neck and was concerned about it justifiably. So the genius represents a good non-invasive way to predictably uh, design the wounds to accommodate the loss of elasticity and loss of collagen in the neck without a long, long recovery. These uh, Venetian blind lines on the cheeks, these are a big problem in trying to tighten the skin. You can try to fill these lines, but it's very, very challenging. Uh, this is another slide showing a fairly impressive tightening of the neck after three treatments, neck and jaw line, again, face and neck. So, in the end, we look at several features about microneedling. And the science of microneedling, again, as I said earlier, is challenging because 
it presumes an understanding of radio frequency tissue interactions. And, and there's no great book. Uh, there are some books, but no one great book that really goes into detail about these types of interactions that not as unnecessarily sophisticated as far as mathematics. So you really do an in-depth look at RF tissue interactions. You have to look at all these features of the scan, primitivity and a lot of uh, characteristics of the scan that are really challenging to understand as far as electrical phenomena. But even without an electrical engineering degree, even without a sophisticated knowledge of calculus and differential equations, the most important things which we talked about tonight is the ability to have a device that is able to control for impedance to some degree, adjust to try to deliver the full complement of injury, to try to reliably predict uh, coagulation zones up to 30%, a precise needle insertion depth, which is guided both by very well-constructed smooth needles, number one, and a torque vector motor to get those needles to where they want to be, an easy-to-use handpiece where the motor does the work, proof of correct power output at treatment settings. So the other thing is look at photographs and look at where the photographs came from, try to determine if these are valid photographs, you know, settings, what do the settings mean? I think one of the problems we're having with the radio frequency microneedling community is it really is hard. You read even some peer-reviewed literature and you look at the methods and you could not reproduce the experiment, which I think is a failure of the authors. In other words, if you don't know what you're doing on an an a microanatomic level as far as the wattage, the voltage, all these things, the electrical array, the way that energy is being delivered, you've done a disservice to the whole uh, laser community and radio frequency community because you're not delivering the specifics of how your device works. You know, have these results been validated with data and how can we make the device and reliable enough, predictable enough to give you a higher return on investment? And of course, you always want to choose, regardless of the manufacturer, one that's going to give you good support, stand by their product. So these are all the things that we look at when we're doing a I think evaluation for any technology. And again, to evaluate and accomplish true 3D fractional, we want insertion accuracy, which we talked about. That's very important. That's related to the needle uh, manufacturing, impedance control, which is related to the circuitry and real time monitoring of uh, impedance to adjust the voltage accordingly to deliver the full complement of injury. And that gets back to genius, of course, which is related to intelligence.